Welcome back to Sidelines TV. I'm here today at the St. George's Polo Club with the formulator and founder of Biostar, Tigger Montague. Tigger, how are you? Good. Good. Nice to see you, Bob. You too. Um, I've been wondering, since you're the expert on this, with horses, there's so many things when you go into a tack shop, you don't even know what to feed them or any feed store. What is a proper diet for horses? What do they really eat? The number one ingredient is fiber. Fiber is number one, then protein, carbohydrates, and fats. You can't just read the percentages on a feed label. You really have to read the ingredients because that tells you how much food is actually in the bag. You know, food ingredients should be what the feed is comprised of. And most of the time, it's a little bit of food and a whole lot of additives because it has to be fortified because there's really, after they've processed it, there's nothing left. Well, the processing that brings the point back around too that, I mean, for people, there's a whole huge movement for eating whole foods, eating entirely everything. You've really done that as the formulator with Biostar. How does that work? We chose to go whole food because it puts less stress on the GI tract, and that's number a number one factor in horses. The incidences of ulcers, both colonic and gastric, are you know, epidemic. Maybe we're recognizing it quicker, but the more processed food you give them, the greater the stress on the GI tract. And, and the GI tract is the seat of health in a horse. It affects the liver, the immune system. So the less stress there, the less stress there are in other body systems. Okay, and with that whole food, there's so much genetically modified food here that and people in the United States are finally getting aware of it as much as they are in Europe and banning it in a lot of places. Is that as prevalent in the equine feed? It, almost every equine feed, unless it's organic, has GMOs. And it's the same with the supplements because genetically modified organisms are not just the corn, the soy, the canola, the alfalfa, the sugar beets. They're also the yeasts and the amino acids because the amino acids are made from the yeasts. Hmm. So it's now permeated into places that you wouldn't expect to find a genetically modified organism. And are there chemical traces left in that as well? It's the glyphosate, it's the Roundup. What's happened is despite the GMO companies saying, well, well by growing GMO crops, you're going to use less pesticides and herbicides. We found that it has increased two to five times greater than with conventional grown crops. And the weeds are becoming resistant to the glyphosate. And the glyphosate is spread on these GMO seeds that are engineered to resist it. But our microbiota, our microorganisms, are not. So when you, when you ingest or the horses ingest or the dogs ingest a gen genetically modified seed, the microbiota in your gut is getting the glyphosate. And a, a recent study coming out of England, it's two weeks old, it sh tested GMO soy in Iowa, conventional soy and organic soy, all grown in Iowa in different places in Iowa. The highest nutritional value was with the organic soy. The only soy that had glyphosate in it, residue, was the GMO. So it actually <laughs> absorbs it as well. Correct. And then it gets into your gut. And it's mainly the, the EU researchers that are really m making the link between Roundup and Parkinson's, cancer, Alzheimer's, all those diseases are on the rise. And autism, I mean, autism has just exploded. And in the barn, have you seen horses that are on your whole food diet that's non-GMO versus other horses in the same barn that there's a, a marked difference? There is a marked difference, and, and it really has to do with reducing stress to the GI tract. When you can feed a horse real food, the body has more time to heal and repair itself. It knows what to do with real food. It has all the coenzymes, it has all the fiber and protein and fats. It's, everything is in there mm -hmm. that the body needs. So the bioavailability is very high. 
when you feed processed food, what I call McDonald's for horses, <laughs> it, <laughs> it, it's like if you wanted to go and um, work out, would you go to McDonald's and eat a Big Mac and say, wow, I'm really ready to work out? Or would you go and have a salad and maybe a protein shake? Yeah. And that the horses are experiencing this kind of, it takes time to break down this processed food, which gives the body less time to heal and repair itself. In other places, fix a tendon over here or, or work on the suspensory here. Because the body has the ability to heal and repair when you give it what it needs to heal and repair. I know that in conversations I've had with Dr. Ober, um, the vet for the USCF show jumping team, he had said that a lot of injuries are actually preventable through nutrition, which is kind of a simple thought, but I would never would have thought of that. Well, it's just like a human athlete. I mean, when you look at, you know, the Olympics are on now, when you look at these athletes and you read anything about what they eat, they're not eating junk. Yeah. And processed food is junk. No offense, but that's truly what it is. Some horses do great, just like some people can eat Taco Bell every week, Smoke no cigarettes. problem, yeah, right. drink, it's yeah. not a problem. But there are a, a growing number of horses who are so sensitive that it is a problem. Are feeds for horses labeled now GMO or non-GMO? There is no labeling requirement in the U.S. at all for genetically modified organisms. And this is a real problem for us riders and owners because unless you really know how to read a label, you don't know whether it's GMO or not. And the companies do not have to tell you it's GMO. But uh, Advanced Biological Concepts, which is another supplement company, um, has gone GMO and glyphosate free. So I think, I think it's starting the Genesis feed people in Canada are organic horse feed GMO free. Speedy Beat from England is GMO free. We're now finding sources of, of organic alfalfa pellets. So the, the organic foods are becoming available for horse owners. That's very, very good news. Yes, it is. <laughs> it's especially good news for the horses because their GI tract is the absolute place of health. It's where it all begins, just like it does with us. Great. Do you also make any of these supplements for things other than horses? I do. Um, Biostar makes a, a line of canine, whole food, GMO-free supplements um, because the dogs are under the same assault from processed food and genetically modified organisms as the horses and the humans. That's a really good idea because I know so many people have been buying whatever fancy brands that cost three times as much and they've been tricked all this time because it's essentially no difference just a prettier package there are some very very good um, dog foods that are GMO free it's a small group but they're I, I, I really respect them and they're very diligent about making real food for dogs mm -hmm. I think in a way the dog industry is a little bit ahead of the equine industry. There are more companies that are doing whole food supplements. Um, so the dog, the dog group is a little bit more aware right now than equine, but I think performance horse people in particular really understand that the performance of their horses depends on how good the horse feels. And if the horse's gut doesn't feel good, they're not going to be able to perform. Can you tell us the difference between nutrients that are made in food itself or ones that are made in a lab? Sure. Um, nutrients in food already come in a matrix of the fibers, proteins, amino acids, enzymes. That increases the bioavailability of the nutrients because the body instantly knows what to do with it. We're talking about a, a 70 to 80 percent bioavailability with nutrients from food. Nutrients that are made in the lab they're called isolates because they are isolated from their matrix. They're made with chemicals, um, petroleum byproducts, coal tar derivatives, even nail polish remover is acetone. And although under a microscope, they can look absolutely identical to a molecule from rice, for instance, that's a B vitamin, to the body, they are totally different. And it, and 20 years ago, we didn't know this. 
we thought that if they look the same under the microscope, they're absolutely the same. Now we know that there is a difference between cell saturation and cell utilization. The body needs coenzymes, they're called protein chaperones, they pick up the nutrient and carry it to the cell. The cell sends out a signal, like a zip code, it says, hello, I need some ascorbic acid. Mm -hmm. And these little chaperones carry them. The chaperones are part of the whole food matrix. But when you use an isolate, the body now has to find the protein chaperone, you know, wait for the signal from the cell to, to have it delivered. And it's a much longer process, so the bioavailability drops to 10%. Plus, you're not, your horse is not getting the benefit of all the other cofactors. So it's the difference between something that's made in a lab and something that's made by nature. Got it. Speaking of GMOs, why at Biostar did you choose to seek out having GMO-free certification? We decided to get certified um, to give customers, number one, a, a very clear certification um, proof that when we say we're GMO-free, we really are GMO-free. Mm -hmm. The challenge with GMO-free certification in the U.S. is um, so many of our raw materials we had to source from Europe that we were sourcing in the U.S. because there isn't the proper trail of certification from farm to us. And this is where GMO certification is so important. It's like organic certification. You've got to be able to prove your statements. And we wanted to do this for our consumers, and we wanted to do it because we are very concerned about sustainability of farming. The way our food is grown in mass quantities using all these pesticides and herbicides, it is not sustainable. And we know that to keep our horses healthy and our dogs healthy and our families healthy, we need a more sustainable system. And that's going to begin with GMO labeling and a reduction of herbicides and pesticides. Well, Tigger, thank you for taking the time to open our eyes about this. Okay, thanks, Rob. Great. For Sidelines TV, I'm Rob Jordan.